Well, it's an honor and a joy to be sharing God's word with you on this very special weekend. Well, you might ask, what makes this weekend so special? Well, it's always a joy, always a pleasure to be able to see our kids both share and show their love, their appreciation, their respect and their honor to moms. But also, I think this weekend is special because there's really never been a more revealing time of how difficult and how challenging this whole momming, this whole parenting thing really is than these last couple of months. And so moms, you deserve our respect. Moms, you deserve our love and our appreciation. And Mother's Day weekend, it truly is a time to show honor. Now, I don't know what this season of life, where it finds you. For my wife and I, with five young kids, it's like kids are just everywhere. Maybe you're in a season where you're no longer in the house with mom, but mom still lives close by. Or maybe for you, your connection to mom on this weekend, it's a FaceTime call, it's a, maybe a Google Hangout or Zoom or even just a card in the mail. Or maybe today, this season, you find yourself on a weekend like this, really honoring the memory of your mom. Whichever season you're in, there's still an opportunity to tangibly show honor to your mom. And I would encourage you to do that. I believe it's so very important. Now, that's not to recognize that that may be a challenge for some of us. I mean, the reality is there is no perfect mom, only perfect mother-in-laws, right? No, there's no perfect mom. There's no perfect parent. And for some of us, we may have a very difficult or a painful relationship with our parents. And so showing honor might be something that you can't even begin to wrap your head around. But I'd wanna encourage you that, that showing honor to your mom on a Mother's Day weekend such as this, maybe it begins with seeing mom a little bit differently. Rather than viewing her as just wicked, maybe view her as one who's been wounded. And, and try to appreciate either the good she tried to do, or better yet, even this. You can appreciate the work that God can do, the good that he can do, even in the midst of pain, even in the midst of brokenness. The reality is, honoring mom, well, this is one of the first commandments in all of the Bible that comes with a promise. In fact, Maybe you're familiar with the writings of the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul wrote a majority of the New Testament. And when he was seeking to encourage new Christians and how to navigate the relationships in life, he began to talk about the husband and wife relationship and the parent and child. He encourages those believers in Ephesus to think back to the Old Testament, to that commandment with the promise. In fact, it's in the book of Ephesians chapter six. Let me read it to you. He says, honor your father and mother. This is the first commandment with a promise. If you honor your father and mother, things will go well for you and you will have a long life on the earth. Now listen, Paul doesn't say that because moms may have those like classic one-liners, like if you don't straighten up, I'm gonna knock you into next week. Now, it's Mother's Day weekend, so I won't say whether or not I ever heard anything like that as a child growing up, but I can say this, I've said something maybe like that, often as a parent. But one of the ways children of any age show their love, share their appreciation, or even honor mom on a weekend like this well, it's, it's through one of these, right? A card. I mean, again, in the season that I'm in, we, we seem to get cards on almost every single occasion. And they're fun. Sometimes they're funny and they're very near and dear to our heart. I mean, finding the right card can be a challenge. Maybe you ask the question, should I go political? Now, I'm not gonna read this in a Trump voice, but I thought this was funny. You have the highest approval rating of any mom ever. Really tremendous, totally the best. And the whole history of moms, other moms, losers. Believe me, everyone agrees. 
<laughs> or maybe you think, maybe I should stay a little bit more like culturally current, like have an exotic Mother's Day. Now, I know we're in church together. I don't know if that crosses the line or not, but cards can be fun and kids' cards, well, they can even be hilarious. They can be funny. I mean, I'll never forget hearing about this one. And in fact, this one, I actually know the author and I know the recipient, but it's Mother's Day. And so I'm gonna protect the innocent. I'm not gonna share who wrote this or who it was to, but I'll never forget this. I love mom. She's a great maid. She's got chubby arms. Cards, whether a, a printed card or a handwritten card, they're really meaningful when they're personal, right? When they're personal. Now, here's the thing I want to encourage you with from the word of God on this Mother's Day weekend. God has written not a card, but a book that is extremely personal. From cover to cover, the Bible, it both shows and showcases God's faithfulness and his devotion to his people. I mean, there are an endless number of characteristics about God that we see in God's word. We know in God's word that he truly is all knowing. I mean, maybe you remember that whole example that he's got that drone perspective, that he sees things from the beginning to the end and from the end to the beginning. God sees everything. He truly is all knowing, but not only that, he's all powerful. There is no one like him. He's all knowing, he's all powerful, and he's all present. He's everywhere. The word of God tells us that God is righteous, that he's completely in control. But here's something I'd like to encourage you with today on this Mother's Day weekend. This God who truly does know everything, who truly is all powerful and everywhere at every time, listen, this God is faithful. This God is devoted. Now, you may say devoted. Is that a word that we still hear very often? I mean, if you were to say, hey, Alexa, what's devoted mean? You might get some of these synonyms, committed, loyal, affectionate, caring, crazy about, dedicated, doting, dutiful, faithful, fond of, loving, steadfast, stuck on, thoughtful, and this one I love the most, wild about. This is who God is. He's not one who's on his heels in his love, devotion, dedication, and faithfulness to his people. No, not at all. I mean, if you consider some of the, the antonyms, like what it means to not be devoted, here's what you would find. Apathetic, disloyal, inconstant, neglectful, negligent, uncommitted, unfaithful, and untrustworthy. That's not who our God is. See, as believers, we need to settle in our souls who our God is. This great creator, this king of the universe, he is also the one who is faithful and devoted to his people. That means he's not apathetic. He's not untrustworthy. No, he's faithful. Now, how do I know that? Well, the word of God, right? The, the card that's so personal that he's written to us, it shares with us and shows to us who this God is. I mean, there are countless places in scripture where you and I can see evidence of God's faithfulness. Think of all the stories of the lives of the people, both in the Old Testament and the New. The promises that God made to Abraham, how God was faithful to Isaac, to Jacob, to Joseph, to the very nation of Israel, to, to David. The list goes on and on, life after life, story after story. We see this constant, consistent characteristic of God. He's faithful and he's devoted. But today, let me just share with you a few verses from scripture to remind us of his devotion to us. The psalmist, Psalm 89, he writes, O Lord God Almighty, who is like you, you are a mighty God, O Lord, and your faithfulness, it surrounds you. I love that. What surrounds our God? Faithfulness. 
Psalm 33, for the word of the Lord is right and true. He is faithful in all he does. Psalm 36, your love, O Lord, it reaches to the heavens. Your faithfulness, it goes to the skies. And this truth is so profound. It's like he repeats it in Psalm 108. For great is your love, higher than the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the skies. Think of Lamentations chapter three. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed. For his compassions, they never fail. And listen to this. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. See, here's the thing I want you to catch about this great God that we have on this Mother's Day weekend. Our heavenly father, he's faithful. He's devoted to his people. And I really, really want you to catch this today. Moms, listen to me. God loves you. God sees you and God is there for you. I want to encourage you to be one who opens up that card that he's written with you in mind. Why, you may ask? Because God's word helps you see things rightly as they are. See, there's kind of like this principle. There's kind of like this rhythm. There's this equation and it goes like this. Information impacts your perception and your perception impacts your reality. You say, what do you mean by that? Who we ultimately come to be is shaped by how we see. Let me say that again. Who you and I, who who we come to be in life, it's ultimately shaped by how we see things. Our perceptions shape our realities and our perceptions are shaped by what we take in. The information, what we watch, what we hear, what we read, those things form and shape and fashion how we see things in life. And so here's the reality. We need a steady diet of the right information, the truth. Without the right information, we won't see things rightly. Now, we know this to be true, right? You've heard it a thousand times before. You are what you eat. And everyone knows whether we like it or not, a healthy diet is imperative for a healthy lifestyle. But let me share something with you. Everyone also knows, at least here in the South, that this stuff, man, this stuff is good. I mean, in my opinion, this is as good as fast food, or let me just say good food served quickly as it gets. I mean, isn't this the Christian fast food? I mean, there's nothing like it to be able to open up that warm chicken sandwich, which for me, No butter on the bun, which I didn't know there was such an option until my wife so lovingly shared it. No pickle and just a dab of that sweet nectar, the Chick-fil-A sauce. I mean, there's nothing like taking a bite out of a Chick-fil-A sandwich. It's, It's good. So very good. But here's the reality. And this is the sad truth of the matter. Man cannot live on Chick-fil-A alone. And on Mother's Day, neither can moms because you know what? Sunday, Chick-fil-A isn't open. But this is the reality. Too much Chick-fil-A, too much of this good stuff. Well, here's the challenge. Here's the reality. Here's the sad truth. You'll start to waddle like a chicken, right? You've got to have a healthy diet to have a healthy lifestyle. Now, here's what I want you to see. Think of the information you take in as the food you give your heart and your mind. And we get information from everywhere in this day and age. Netflix and Hulu, Disney Plus, Instagram influencers, the constant news, friends and family. We need the truth of the word of God to rightly form our perceptions because those perceptions, they shape who we are. They they shape our attitude, they they, they shape our choices, They, they shape our reactions in life. And you can either allow circumstances and the values of this world to shape your perception, how you see things, or you can allow the truth 
of God's word. The truth of God's word that lays out things as they truly are. And one of the greatest truths from God's word that I want to share, that I want to have us settle in our souls on this Mother's Day weekend is that God is faithful. He's consistent. He's one who is crazy about, devoted to his people. So open up this handwritten card, his word on a daily basis. Set your perceptions rightly with the truth of the word of God. We have his written word. But not only that, let me encourage you with this on this great Mother's Day weekend. We have the living word of God. You say, what do you mean? D doesn't God's written word claim to be alive and active? Absolutely. But also John 1 tells us that Jesus is called the word. Listen to John 1.1. 1, 1. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God and all things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in the darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. See, here's what God's word is telling us. Jesus is the word. You say, what do you mean by that? That Jesus and the Holy Bible are the same thing? No, words express meaning. And Jesus, as the word of God, is the full expression of who God is. You want to know what God is like? Look to Jesus. And why did God give his son? Listen, these two verses are some of the most well-known and overly familiar passages in all of scripture. But they're so well-known because the truth packed inside these verses is life-changing. John said it in John chapter three. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only begotten son that whosoever would believe in him would not perish but have everlasting life. And I love this. Verse 17, God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. You know, it's like Billy Graham once said, he said, God proved his love on the cross when Christ hung and bled and died. It was God saying to the world, I love you. See, this is the beautiful thing about the living word of God. Jesus, God's one and only begotten son, through him, his life, his death, his burial and his resurrection, he has made a way for you and I to have a right restored relationship with God. It's the free gift of salvation. Again, the apostle Paul, when he was seeking to explain these great truths to those early Christians, he wrote in the book of Ephesians, listen, he said, God saved you by his grace when you believed. You can't take credit for this. It's a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done, but it's God's gift to you. And here is my question on Mother's Day weekend. What do you do with this great gift? This gift of salvation that God has given? Well, here's how you and I can respond and receive God's gift of salvation. First and foremost, recognize that Jesus is the son of God, the one who has come to take away the penalty and the power of sin. Recognize who he is, but secondarily realize that you need a savior, that really the only way to be forgiven is through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. First and foremost, you recognize who God is. You realize that you need him and then simply you repent you turn from your sin and you receive Jesus as the Lord of your life and the savior of your soul. I mean, the word of God tells us that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. 
and you can receive the very best gift on this Mother's Day weekend, a right restored relationship with God. And right now, as you're watching this from wherever you are, I want to encourage you to connect with one of our pastors and staff members who are online watching with you. I want to encourage you to respond and even request prayer. We would love to come alongside you in your relationship with God made possible through his son, Jesus. See, on this Mother's Day weekend, I want to encourage you. God has given such wonderful gifts to his people. He's given us his written word. Not a card that's here today and gone tomorrow, but his word that endures forever. And in his word, we see who he is and we see life as it's meant to be lived accurately, rightly. His word shapes our perceptions the way they're supposed to be. So my encouragement is to stay and to stick in God's word. Have a steady diet of that right information. And in his word, we see who he truly is. God is that one who's faithful. God is that one who's devoted. God is that one who loves so much that he gave his very best. The expression of who he is, his son, Jesus, the living word. And if you've never received him, listen, today is your day. And if you have, if you find yourself on this Mother's Day weekend knowing the Lord and in a right relationship, and let me just say this, enjoy Jesus. Enjoy the joy of knowing that you are enjoyed by God because of what Jesus has done on your behalf and mine. See, on this Mother's Day weekend, there's so much to be thankful for. God is good, God is faithful, he's devoted, and he has made a way, the way, to have a right relationship with him through his son, Jesus. And there is no better gift on this Mother's Day weekend than his son, Jesus Christ. 